Hey guys, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids, a series dedicated to various artworks and sport creations created by the community based on animal hybrid prompts. Last week we did the lionfish and cobra, and this week we're doing a vulture and a scorpion. And so far the variety of submissions has been interesting. For my own submission, I did have a bit of a tough time trying to think of an idea. I didn't really have too much inspiration, but I did still submit something. So I went into Spore, I whacked around some different ideas, checking out all sorts of different references for vultures and scorpions. And I ended up thinking to myself that any resting position I could imagine, it just doesn't look very interesting. So in the end, I kind of imagined, hold on, rather than trying to go for an incredibly unique design because I was kind of struggling, instead I went and tried to go for a bit more of a unique posture. And so I've imagined my submission in a threatening display. I've imagined it here where it's like really in a threatening posture. Its stinger is ready to attack. Wings are flared out, making it look larger than it really is, really ruffled out. And of course, obligatory pincers are shoved onto the wings just to give it like that little bit of extra edge. And overall, I really am happy with the posture itself. While the concept may be a little bit dull, it's the posture I wanted, all of that being said, when I then took the creation into ZBrush, oh, the colours, I'm really, really happy with the colours. Like I said, Griffin Vulture, Emperor Scorpion, kind of went a little bit nuts here in terms of texturing. I particularly left all the scales, exoskeleton parts, the armor, the feathers, really down to the imagination. They're not really that clearly defined, so where it goes from feathers to exo armor is completely up to you to interpret. And I will add that I did this while live streaming, so the chat did suggest some blue highlights, which I have to say really make it pop. And considering I was struggling with an idea i am really happy with how this went i just stuck with it kept it going and for those of you who have been struggling with inspiration as well i hope it serves as a good reminder it's all just for fun and you never know what you might make if you try and thus we move on to the community submissions and for our very first one it's a sport creation by cod gamer this one i gotta say it's a bit more on the cuter side i think it might be just the large eyes and the great big plume of feathering you can see they went with a more scorpion body and added the vulture features on top i think it looks quite nice and following cod gamer is top shelf gravy with another sport creation so this one also focuses more on the scorpion but with a few more vulture features added in such as the wings and the beak and the tuft of feathers around the neck which is quite an interesting touch actually the eyes, I gotta say, are very uncanny, but for good reason though. Seeing a vulture head with more than the standard amount of eyes is kind of unsettling, but it's a very good job of it. The same with the claws as well for that matter. And I really like the armor ridging going down the center of the torso, the head, the bag, and the tail. And coming up next is another sport creation, this time by Zemi's son, which I must say is very cute. It's another interpretation of a more scorpion focused one. I gotta say, it's very interesting how the first three have all kind of followed the same dynamic. <laughs> Of course, we can see independent ideas and features, in particular the way that the tails have been portrayed and the legs as well. This one's got a much sharper tail, far more domineering claws, but also the more insectoid eyes. It is really interesting seeing the three of them all come together like this. Now moving on to a digital drawing by Somi, another scorpion-centric one, but with a twist, and that is that the typical insectoid legs are instead vulture talons, and it's got a pretty awesome mane that you can see on some vultures. I must say, I really love the texturing on the talons and the tail looks absolutely fantastic. The shading in general is absolutely brilliant, as is the ambient lighting. Although I can't help but feel a little bit disturbed and I gotta say, you know, well done to that. It's a very clever interpretation and for what it is, I do think it is very well executed. Now up next we have something a bit more sweeter by Clover Sage. This one's gone far more on the vulture side but with a bit of a creepier scorpion-like face. I think this was like a very nice and elegant match between the two. I really like the bit of exoskeleton armor on the back of the neck. The head overall is very nicely crafted and I do like the spiky beak. I think it matches it very well. It's just enough to give it like a more insectoid look while still seeing the vulture features. Also, I just want to point out the feathering. The feathering is very nicely drawn. Subtle but effective. Coming up next is two different interpretations by Caliber Light. This one here gives me a bit of a, I'd say almost graffiti kind of feeling. It's really nice. The way the eyes are done also give me a bit of an Egyptian vibe. This one looks very grand, very powerful. It's got nice large talons, a thin scorpion tail, and nice narrow pincers. But to compare it to the next one, it's more on a bold vulture kind of sight. Overall has more of a scavenger feel, whilst the previous one had more of a grand hunter feel. It is interesting to see what less feathering or fur can do to a concept, and just how much it makes the two vary. And coming up next, we've got a design by Fox Women. Now this one reminds me of Ra. 
I don't know why, it just, I think it might be the large wings. Perhaps scorpions are prompt to give me some uh, unintended Egyptian vibes, but this really reminds me of just Ra, the Egyptian god. Either way, just the overall posture and just how it's kind of looking down on that hippo, I believe, which looks very cute, by the way. It just looks very large and deity-like. The crestening or patterning on the back of the neck is really interesting. The face looks really cool. And the way that the pincers are kind of held up towards the chest almost looks in a way like it's being submissive or it is trying to look less threatening. It is really interesting. I love the overall, just the way it's looking down on it. It just looks so large and grand. Coming up next is Pop Culture with a more dossier looking one for their Manus. Now this one has a bit more of an amphibity kind of appearance to it, where it's got the large wings, it's got the frontal limbs which, in which this case are pincers, and that's it, it doesn't have any legs. So it's got a one set of limbs, technically two including wings, which is a really cool alternative. I really like the colour scheme, I like the way the colours break apart, especially when you compare the larger feathers to the smaller feathers and then that breaks apart compared to the exoskeleton parts. I also like all the different designs, especially the hatching cycle in the upper right hand corner. Pop culture has also included some different sketches of their idea in plus their references, and also a sport creation variant of a white manus which once again has a very nice clear definition of colour schemes and I really like how armoured the tail is. Up next we've got a sketch by Swaggy Tracks. This one gives me more of a manticore vibe, or even Chimera in fact. The way the large pincer comes off the back, it kind of reminds me of wings. I also like all the matted feathers around the torso. It's kind of interesting to see like a bit of an in-betweener there. And the posture as well just looks rather aggressive, like it's hunched over, hunting. And up next, we've got a sport creation by Armored Guy. Now this one's interesting. Rather than going with pincers, they've gone with like a bit of a vestigial wing arm from what I can see. Every arm and leg has talons, as you'd expect from a vulture, but the front arms are like somewhat wingish, whereas the rest of the body is rather plain, but it's got tuft of feathering around the stinger and of course the insectoid eyes around the beak. Another interesting combination of the two. Coming up next we've got another sketch by Emma Ank with the tag please kill it with fire. I don't think it's too bad although the frontal appearance of the face does look kind of creepy to which I say good job to be honest. The legs I just noticed are pincers and that is actually kind of a terrifying thing to imagine. Actually you know what imagining a vulture coming at you but with pincers for legs is kind of scary so while the sketch itself is very very good I would also think yeah kill it with fire. <laughs> Next up is a portrait by Zumpo123. I absolutely love the detailing around the eyes. There's a lot of old subtle details around the eyes, the cheeks, the forehead. I also really like the different angles, but they're just really subtle, but very characteristic, very defining. I also do like the idea of the bottom jaw, the way it kind of splits into two, and just the way the tongue, I think, looks in between. This is a very nice and thoughtful transition between the two. I really like this one. And up next, we've got this beautifully majestic one by Glass the Absol. Now this one looks stunning. I absolutely love the tail. The tail is so wispy, but I like how it still ends up in a barb and feathers. The way the wings are tipped off with the little exoskeleton feet and the pincers as well. It almost feels like golden armor on the wings, which is a really nice touch. And I really love the bronze and gold color palette in general. It really kind of gives it like a bit more of a royal theme. And the overall tension of detail to the face is stunning. The eye is really piercing. I love the little black tuft coming out. And I think the posture of the wings as well is absolutely fantastic. This is really nicely done. Next up, we've got a drawing by Poophead27. Now this one, again, I'm not sure what it is. It just gives me another Egyptian vibe. I think it's because it can almost pass off as a hieroglyph in a way. I really like how the wings are folded. I also like the tufts of feathers coming out from the rear. And I really like the neck. It has the same kind of armor design that you'd normally see in scorpion tails. And the head as well is really interesting. The jaw is kind of terrifying in a very good way. Another really cool concept. Next up, we're going to Voltorpion by Guggenheim. Now, this one's a really cool concept. It's very neat and tidy. It's like a centaur, except you're trading human for a vulture and a horse for a scorpion. Speaking of which, the design on the scorpion, or more so the execution, to like all the little bumps on the armor, all the different little shades of colour and gradients and of course a little line of feathering going around the base of the tail. It looks absolutely fantastic. The scorpion portion just looks really spot on, quite realistic in fact. Whereas the vulture portion, again, really like the variation in colour schemes and I absolutely love all the dark patterning around the base of the wings. Extremely well executed, nicely done. Next up we have this wonderful piece by Little Gummy. Far on the vulture side with a big scorpion tail. I absolutely love the talons. I think they look really, really cool. Very nicely armoured in fact, but also just really nice shading. And I love the expression as well. This looks very grandiose, almost kind of excited in a way. And I think the texturing on the feathers is absolutely fantastic, especially around the wings and the mane around the chest as well. 
Next up, we got The Professional Bone Crusher by Zedenzel. I absolutely love the expression on the upper right hand corner. It just looks so sinister and menacing. This has got like a very humanoid vibe to it, but I think it's really well done. It kind of reminds me of something from One Punch Man. I can imagine it being like a very formidable creature to fight, especially if those pecs and musculature. This is just really creative and I absolutely just love all the patterning, the different colorations. We got in fact two variants as well. We got a nighttime version too, which is actually quite fitting considering there are some scorpions that do glow under UV light or I glow in the dark and the blue variant does quite a good job of illustrating that. It also brings out certain details, especially around the talons and feet. This is absolutely fantastic and like I said, really creative. Next up we get a Vulture Score by Sarek. This is kind of an interesting one as the feathering is actually kind of reversed, whereas the rest of the body seems to be either a very small covering of fe feathering or perhaps none at all, the tail on the other hand is extremely bushy, while still maintaining that scorpion appearance. It's certainly an interesting alternative, and of course going for the scorpion legs but with the vulture talent. Always a good creepy choice. And next up we've got a mega build by Firely, with their vulture scorpion looking victorious with a meal. Now what's really neat about this being a mega build is that it really allows Firely to use different textures, different colours, and different patterning that you normally can in a spore creation. For example, the piercing amber eyes, the bumper mapping texture along the neck, the bold purple claws, the grey armoured tail and the brown wings, everything it just contrasts really nicely and has a lot more texturing and pattern than you normally would be able to have. The face as well is very well crafted, it's definitely like a scorpion head but as if the scorpion mouth was kind of shifted into a beak, which is really clever. And I also like all the various tufts of fur on the scorpion tail itself, on the base, around the back and hips, and around the shoulder blades. I think it's extremely well done, you can really appreciate the effort that's gone into this one. Next up we got a very sleek looking Scorpitrid by Dinochris. I really like how thin this creature looks. The fact that it's very thin would normally make you think of something that's quite fragile, but because of the size, I can instead imagine it being very agile instead. I also really like the design of the wings, in the fact that the wings have their feathers. It's almost like wiven wings in a way, except it also has these tendrils of the scorpion tails coming out from them as well, which is really creepy and very, very nicely done. I really like the head as well. Again, we see like a more scorpion-centric kind of head, but with a very clear and defined beak. And I love the patterning going along the side of the body as well. Nice bit of armor definition, very nicely done. And then we can see down across the same creation in Spore. There's some of the more of a color palette. You can still see the long, narrow design. The way that the scorpion tails kind of shift out from the wings. And that big, narrow head. And of course, a dark and foreboding color scheme. Next up, we got a Spore creation by Vianesh. I gotta say, the red on this really does make it pop, and it looks very intimidating. They're very cool. I also like the striking white around the head and the pincers as well. The texture on the tail looks awesome. The tail looks very well defined. And the overall posture on this one really kind of makes it feel like it's ready to attack. You know, it's a bit of a threat display with the claws in the air and the wings opened upright. Next up is another sport creation by Danny DLM. I gotta say, I love the big spiky tail. Really nice use of the exoskeleton limb parts there. Also the armoured body and I love all of the tufting around the neck, the big bushy wings and the eyes as well. Very nicely done. And following next is a Scorutra by the Plant Guy. Another awesome looking, very feathered scorpion spore creation. Much more armoured, much more feathered. The eyes are piercing and I love it. It's got a nice angry looking grin. The stinger looks fantastic. And I really like how the pincers are kind of hidden among the feathers. That's actually quite kind of easy to miss and it's really cool in terms of camouflage. Up next we got another one by Filey, in fact, which seems to be a regular spore version of their mega build. You can see it has a lot of the same features, same kind of colour scheme. I think it's meant to be just a playable variant of their mega build, which I have to say just really captured all the main features, ideas and such. Following Filey is Nep with their submission. This one kind of makes me imagine like some kind of desert crawler with the lighter colour scheme. I really like the use of the dark injection texture, where it gives the body like a bit of a dusty, kind of mottled appearance. The tail looks good, and I really like just the big heavy crusting around the head and neck. Also adds a nice contrast in terms of colour scheme. Up next we have this both majestic and creepy piece by Strange Verb. It is absolutely majestic in terms of the overall posture, with the sun shining in the background, it's making the wings glow and it just looks really really beautiful. But then when you look a little bit closer you do see the couple of features add a little bit uncanny. Obviously the scorpion vibes, which I think is very clever, it's a very cool contrast of themes. 
or impressions. It draws you in, but then as you get drawn, you see, oh, actually, this is a scary creature. And I think that is very, very well done. I think the feathering around the back and the neck is absolutely beautifully done. There's a lot of subtle details, but you really can see if you look carefully. Having the wings as webbing, as opposed to feathers, is an interesting variation. And I do like all the little claws and spikes it has coming out of the wings. And the head itself is a very clever transition, like in between the between Vulture and Scorpion. This is really cool. I do like how it draws you in and then you just see more and more of the features. There's a lot to look at and admire. Next up, we have a rather colourful design by Zeppelin King with the tag Taste the Rainbow. Now, this is certainly a very interesting one. I would admit it's a little bit hard to see certain definitions. I can see the talons quite clearly and the pincers as well. I really like the multitude of tails. I do think that's really cool. And I think it makes for a really nice variant of a scorpion version of a large plume tail. It's certainly an interesting idea going for a full on rainbow one like this. And I do commend the creativity. Next up, we have Mayfair with a couple of his vulture scorpions. The head is really nicely crafted. I've said it before and I'll say it again. He does such a good job of defining bold, strong colours in his creations. The tail as well. The tail is kind of interesting actually. It's used a it's either stacked the nail downs onto a limb or it's used a stacking mod. But either way, it's interesting how it's used nail downs as opposed to exoskeleton limbs like many of us have done already. It does make for a nice and creative contrast. And I do like the light feathering coat around the body. I think it looks really good and does a good job of tying it together. Next up, we've got a second submission by Cod Gamer. This time with a slightly more bird looking variant than this previous one and a nice density color scheme the pins is looking sharp and the tail looking rather narrow i would not want to get anywhere near that stinger not to mention our large talents as well i can imagine this one being quite fearsome and very sharp when engaged or threatened next up we got this wonderful drawing by master of the cats i really like how they've gone with a more scorpion color scheme here where the feathers match the same dark blue and gray color scheme as the armor and exoskeleton I also really like the shading and I do think that the little subtle bits of lighting on the more armoured parts do a very good job of showing texture and the tail as well, I absolutely love the tail. It's a very nice combination of feathers on the actual exoskeleton parts themselves. Next up we've got a rather creepy one by Frostbite. Definitely on a more scorpion route but this time rather than having large vulture features, instead its body is covered in feathers in such a way that it reminds me of a tarantula and it's very effective and quite creepy. I also like the variety of talons where the two back legs have typical talons but the front legs are sort of a talon in a pincer shape which is very interesting and the head as well is a mixture of a beak and mandibles it kind of reminds me of a head crab and a tarantula at the same time and that is terrifying <laughs> made very nicely done speaking of terrifying we have this incredible piece by little theropods now I can imagine a lot of people saying this one's very, very creepy. Yes, it is. It is extraordinarily well done. There's a fantastic amount of focus on the shadows and it really gives it a 3D depth. The head is horrible in all the best ways possible, especially the pink eye, which really doesn't help. But again, it complements it so well. The tail has some absolutely amazing transitions and details. I love the tough armor top and the fleshy underbelly. All the exposed skin just looks nasty and the wings are really clever how instead of feathers they've used individual insectoid wings to create, you know, the faux effect of feathers. Like I said, I can imagine people saying this one's really creepy but it does such a good job of it. I'm not usually a fan of creepy myself and I absolutely love this one. Little Theropod, absolutely well done mate. Next up we got a piece by G. Gabriel BF. I really like the overall Roman setting on this one, got big Roman pillars in the background. I like the variety of line art styles as well, how they've got the big thick outlines to highlight the creature itself. I really like the design of the hybrid itself, and I also just really like the very subtle little, um, what you call it, like pit or textures around the neck, just, just ahead of the mane. And yeah, I think, I think the overall setting was actually really clever because it gives it like a very big manticore vibe, especially to the posture of the wings, the almost line-like mane, the manticore-like tail or scorpion tail. It's really cool. I like the overall setting. I think they've done a very, very good job of selling that vibe. The concept itself has been very well illustrated here. And also from G. Gabriel BF, we also have their attempt at remaking it in 3D. It looks to be still a work in progress, but I really commend, you know, actually trying to do it. Like, that's fantastic. It's always good trying new things. And I think they did a very good job on this one. Knowing how limiting sculptures can be, they've done a very good job of dividing the shapes, especially around the exoskeleton and the legs. Mate, keep going. Definitely keep going. Next up, we got a piece by Anonyma, and I must say, the first thing I saw was the head on the upper left, which looks beautiful, and the eye is absolutely incredible, to which I then had my eyes drawn to the bottom right, and I was <laughs> not prepared for that. That's really, really clever. 
and actually really subtle as well. Like I find myself looking back and forth a lot, trying to find like, oh wait, hold on, where'd the big eye go? Oh, where those little small eyes come from? Where's the break in the mouth? It's really, really clever and well done. Saying that, I absolutely love the design on the bottom left. Just the great big wings. The scorpion legs are really creepy in an absolutely fantastic way. This is just sort of like a really awesome looking hybrid. It just looks very menacing and also quite sinister, which is fitting considering how it actually looks when it opens its mouth. This is very well done. Next up, we've got a sketch by Dragon33657. I really love like all the texturing going on there. I think that's uh, lots of little feathers all c covering the exoskeleton. Whether it's feathers or just like a bit of a rough texture on the armor, either way, it's very well done and it really gives it like a lot of depth. I also like the attention to the wings as well and the face. I just love that evil look in the face. It just looks menacing. I gotta say, I really and particularly love the line out around the uh, main area. I think that is beautifully drawn and very well defined. And coming up next, we have a spore creation by Cat, which actually has a bit of a symmetry, which is very nicely done. I know that symmetry can always be quite tricky to pull off, so made it well done. I also really like the textures. They really highlight in particular around the mane, the limbs and the legs in particular, especially around the hips. I also like how the tail kind of comes in from the side, almost like a snake. And a very creative use of parts to create the beak and face as well. Very nicely done. And up next, we've got another spore creation by the Chronicles Witch. Now this one, my first impression is that this one could fit through some very, very small gaps and that alone is kind of terrifying, <laughs> just how close it is to the ground. You can tell this is more of a land dweller. In fact, I almost imagine this being some kind of a uh, sand creature. It can burrow itself in the sand and camouflage. I also really like the variety of the limbs. If we can look at the initial three, you know, typical scorpion limbs as the base example, then you compare that to the wings with the great big pincers, which I think I actually made from hands or, um, the beak head, which is quite an interesting touch. That varies on quite a lot, and especially the two very large, very thin legs coming out the back. Again, like really nice variety. Next up, we have this rather interesting mechanical piece by Frost Dragon 365 Now, I feel like with this being a mechanical piece, they do do a good job of still introducing the vulture and scorpion pieces, in particular the very large bird-like wings, which have a very nice definition of colour. And of course, the arachnid legs and the scorpion tail. It's a very creative concept, and while I'm not very good at talking about mechs, I do think that it is still very well done. Following Frost Dragon is Sagasar with this beautifully designed one. I really love the red wings that they just really pop out and especially with the asymmetrical pose how it's sort of posed mid-flight almost mid-turn I think is very very creative very nicely done I just love the wings I think the wings and the coloration in general just really just really sell it and as a result of the way that the legs are kind of hanging in the air just very carefully balanced and the way the tail kind of curves out I feel like this one was very cleanly executed it just looks really good very polished it actually has a bit of a cute face as well Following Sagasol is Silent and Gamer with their own sport creation. Again, another nice warm colour scheme. I really am enjoying these warmer colour schemes. The addition of the fur part, which I assume is meant to be feathers, along the back is a very neat touch, and I really like just the large bulky wings. Also the addition of spikes on the pincers as well is quite nice. Coming up next is Janan with their submission of Zagera. I'm absolutely loving just the sheer number of spikes we put on this, but not necessarily because they're spikes, but just how small they are, and it really does show a dedication to detail, in particular of the tail. It's very subtle, but it does show the effort along the back of the head as well. So now the eyes are really nice touch. Generally the nice choice of eyes, plus the fact that there's four of them and not two. Now, I will admit, this one does give me, like, a bit of a reptile vibe. I think that could just be due to the overall anatomy of the body. But with it being a, another kaiju, I do think it actually fits out quite nicely. I also just really like the angle and posture of it when it's on top of the building. Just something about that just looks really, really good. And for our final submission of the day, we have a pencil sketch by Shrek. I absolutely love the little tufts that are going along down the beak. I also really like the detail among the exoskeleton parts, particularly around the pincers, the arms, and the tail. Plus the very light covering of hair that you can see on the pincer and on the barb it gives like a nice little extra dynamic detail. Plus the wings, I think the wings just look fantastic as well. And I think that shall about wrap us up for today then. There's so many submissions to go over and we need to keep a good healthy amount for the next episode as well. I tried to fit in as many as I can here, but without rushing too much. As always, thank you all so much for participating and for watching, and I really hope that you are enjoying it. If you'd like to submit your own piece for the prompt, as always, you can do so either on Discord, email, comment section, Twitter, deep in touch, anywhere that you can reach me, and I shall try to include it in the next video. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.